Hello, my name is Dante Rene, and welcome to the Ten Room Bizarro YouTube page, where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. And tonight is another Jess Franco review of 1972's Daughter of Dracula. Here it is, put out by Redemption on Blu-ray. Uh, a film by Jess Franco. On the front, you'll see Britt Nichols and Ann Liebert. I believe you pronounced their names right there. And you'll recognize them from Virgin Among the Living Dead as, as well as uh, Britt Nichols from Demons. And This is Daughter of Dracula, 1972. Just saw this for the first time because I believe this is the first release of this film officially uh, through Redemption Films. Um, so let's get into this. This is the back of the DVD. You can see um, Howard Vernon right there and some pretty cool shots right there daughter of dracula here it is folks now what i did was i wrote down a couple notes here to refer to because i didn't want to miss anything but daughter of dracula is really an atmospheric supernatural gothic sex mystery incest cop drama unsolved murders and here are a couple films that for some reason gave me vibes um, within this film that you know the, the, the vibes of these the, of these other films psycho 3 american werewolf in london um, hammer films giallo films and maybe a bit of herschel gordon lewis okay do with that what you will but those are different vibes and feelings i get throughout this film so let's look at this movie daughter of dracula by mr Jess Franco, Jesus Franco. Now, around this time frame, as you know, Mr. Franco was doing tons of movies, some extremely popular. Extre very, this is definitely one of his prolific periods, I believe. And there have been a lot of films I believe I've reviewed already on this YouTube page that were done in this, in this time frame, in this year. So let's look, let's look first at the music in this film. Now, as you know, the music for a lot of his films... Um, with what's done by a composer by the name of Daniel White. Well, the most unbelievable realization to me is that the composer, uh, um, Daniel White, is actually in the film. He's actually in the freaking film, and he plays a, a count in the film. Um, I, I was shocked because I, I never really saw a picture of him before. And, you know, what a fantastic, obviously, if you can hear the plethora of scores that he's done for Franco films. I mean, it's beyond amazing as i've talked about in many countless reviews on this page but let's look at the music for daughter of dracula we have 70s dramatic sounding we almost have playful gothic it could almost have been maybe in a 70s horror tv show like dark shadows or something uh playful in a way orchestrated with some scary stings in there um very off-putting with changes in direction, uh, predominantly during a sex scene near the near the end of the film, it's it's very interesting and very unique how this orchestrated music switches gears at times, especially in light of what's happening visually in the film. It's off-putting and somewhat disturbing and very very bizarre, um, and it's it's. Very classic sounding music, um, almost like Pino, um, Pino score um, from Dario Argento's Trauma. It almost from it almost has that kind of vibe at times, especially in that film Trauma uh, by by Argento, which is like a very different score for an Argento film uh, since Pino did it. Um, it's definitely unique music for a Franco film. I was thinking that while I was watching it. It definitely brings a different aura, a different vibe uh, about things. It's weirdly playful uh, despite uh, the visual and the story atmosphere in the film. And there's also some sultry jazz, uh, but not too sleazy. It's really not sleazy jazz, but there's some sultry jazz in the film as well at just a couple moments. Just a couple moments. So it really keeps this type of gothic atmosphere throughout the film uh, but in a very 70s dramatic, playful type of way. Um, and, and very, very well done score. So let's go into, uh, definitely got to go into the locations of this particular film. The locations in this film. Um, 
this was like maybe one of the only Franco films I can remember that I've seen so far that really looked like fall. You know, a, a changing color of leaves, leaves on the ground, leaves falling. I'm not exactly sure where the, the location for this film was, definitely, uh, but but it looked like fall. It looked actually cold, and they mentioned the, the temperature being cold. Um, castles and keys and hidden rooms... Okay, at one point, it almost reminded me of the secret garden a little bit with this with this key to a, to a secret room and a hotel and a hotel bar and a beach uh, near the structures where you, where the, the orchestrations of the birds on the beach are kind of utilized and scene changes. And as you know, the way Franco um, oogles um, natural environments and animals and trees and, and, and water and sailboats. You can see that way he eagles the birds in this particular film. Um, we also have a lot of lush greenery at the same time with the fall colors. Uh, these huge iron gates, uh, so the, the crazy amount of sculptures and, and paintings, and they're utilized in the film in very interesting uh, Franco-esque ways. Uh, uh, there's a sculpture garden of sorts. Um, there are these, these, these montages through the film that utilize the sculptures, and that utilize the gardens, that utilize walking. Um, uh, the one thing I've always said in countless reviews is the production value of Franco's films is so spectacular for how low budget and how quickly they were how were, they were made. And the production value is really the locations that he was shooting in. And the way that he utilized no budget, the way that he, and I don't, first and foremost, I don't know how he got these castles. I don't know how he got these locations. I don't know how we got these places. You know, first and foremost, I don't know how we got those places at all. I mean, it doesn't even make sense to me. I mean, did he pay somebody to get those locations? I have no idea. But I'll tell you this, that he is a master, an absolute master of making no budget look like extremely high budget. Um, production value, unbelievable. Let's look at the style in this film. We have a lot of zooms in this film. Um, uh, uh, reverse zooms and forward zooms. And there's a lot of play with focus in this film, especially in a sex scene near the end. I would have to say I've never seen focus in a, in a lens before played with ever in my life as it was in Daughter of Dracula. Um, and Sorry, I have hair. That's one of the problems of having long hair. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, but there's, even in any Franco film I've seen, the focus is, is the stuff he was doing with focus was so avant-garde, so like rebellious and crazy. Um, it, it was really very, very interesting. Some of the most interesting workings with focus that I've ever seen. Now, the couple other things, we have this amazing section with a postcard. And that's all I'm going to say. But oh, you're just sitting there and you're just like, this postcard zoom that's all i'm gonna say and there is an unbelievable smoking scene in this film cigarette smoking um i've never seen anything like it with the backlighting now he's had i believe there was another review on this page i i, I believe there was another movie i think it might have been sinner diary of a nymphomaniac i believe don't where there was an amazing smoking scene well, this was definitely the most amazing i've seen it was just the smoke just it it, it looked thick and full and almost surreal um, the camera really creeps around like a person, and at times I, I guess it is, uh, especially around the, the musical instrument of a piano. That's where the camera really tends to creep the most in this film, around the playing piano, which there is a, a good deal of in this film, and also ties into the score of the film by Daniel White, because there's an orchestrated score of this film with piano as well. So, the camera really creeps around. Now, typically, you'll know that, the, that the, the Franco camera can be very voyeuristic. And yes, it is at times in here sexually. But it's really taking on another level of a very, very creepy, menacing, wandering vibe. As if the original Evil Dead, the way the camera moved through the cabin violently with uh, Bruce Campbell. If it kind of was, was turned around and the camera was now a ghost you know, creeping around a castle. 
Um, a lot of one takes in this film where the camera will do something over here and then just move over here as opposed to other people who would take a take. And we know that from Franco's films in general. Um, the camera, it's very, very wild in this film, yet it's restrained. And I, and I really want to make a point of that because there's definitely other Franco films where the camera is a ton wilder. There's a lot of zooming. There's a lot of play with focus. There's a lot of creeping. Yet it's very restrained and very in tune with the atmosphere of this particular film. So that's all I can say. It's a paradox, right? Franco is in this film. He's acting in this film. But he's acting in this film in a way that I've never seen him act before. Uh, typically he plays just lunatic, crazy, black humor, cr just really, really out there characters. Um, but in this particular film, I've never seen him play a character like this before so far. And he is ghostly and serious and very, very atmospheric. His acting chops are really seen in this film in a totally new way. Um, uh, he's a character who's in tune with the supernatural. Um, it's, it's, it, and he has a, a, a pretty big role in this film in a very, that, that ties in totally with the gothic uh, story atmosphere of the of the film. Um, sexually, um, we have these we have lesbian scenes, predominantly between really only between Britt Nichols and Anne Lieber, um, and they're erotic and they're sexual and there's zooms on the vagina and things like that. But there's nothing internal. This, this is not gynecological Franco, um, and uh, the lesbian scenes are implied too. Um, I mean, the heads are down there, but you're not seeing actual tongues going in or anything else like that. And so it's not really explicit sexuality per se, but it would be considered very probably. You know, it would get an NC-17 today, definitely, for the tone, for the vibes, full nudity, uh, full nudity laying down, writhing around, uh, you know, zoom in shots here and there in the butt, vagina, breasts, uh, sucking of breasts, licking of breasts, things like that. Uh, 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 Brit and, and, and Anne are just, they're gorgeous. I mean, if you've seen them in other films and their, their atmosphere and their faces, their bodies, the way they look, they have very different bodies than each other as well. They're very sexually attractive. They're very alluring. Franco just gets the cream of the crop and they're, they're, they, they carry this film and they're just wild. Um, there is there is a, a writhing on the floor. There's a little bit of dancing. Um, there's a very unique Dracula in this film. He is still, yet he's moving. Okay? Um, oh gosh. You know, he, he rises slowly in stillness, in light. Waxwork-like, yet destructive. There's a very unique coffin scene in this film, something I've never seen before in this particular way, almost violently done. One of the weirdest kisses I've ever seen with fangs before. Um, mysterious characters and red herrings. Um, you know, but you don't know, okay? It's like you know, but you don't know. Uh, sorry, a uh, uh, neighbor here. Uh, you, you might hear some uh, background sound effects. So we have a neighbor right across the way. Um, there's a tiny bit of blood in this film, as you can typically tell with Franco films. There's never a lot of blood for the most part. There's a very tiny amount of blood, but he focuses on it. Um, you know, these are not special effects, you know, that you would typically know in typical horror films. He never cared about that. Um, a very disturbing story involving a bird in this film. Very complex family relations and complex relationships in general which is very common for Franco films complex marriage relations and excellent acting and gosh Vernon I don't want to tell you who he is Howard Vernon but he's excellent as usual uh, even with no speaking Indeed. Um, folks, this is Daughter of Dracula and uh, from Redemption Films. Thank you so much for watching the 10 Room Bizarre YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more like this one. Check out all my other reviews, including tons of Franco, tons of everything else. Thank you so much. Check out my own personal films at youtube.com slash poopy diarrhea. Those are my own films. Thank you. Thank you. 10 Room Bizarro.